Hey guys, Peru here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from Necrotic Operation Mental Castration out March 19th on Reaper Entertainment Europe. This album has 10 tracks, 33 minutes in length, and this is the band's four full length studio album. These guys are a death metal, deathcore band from Germany, and if there's one word to describe this album, is consistency. It doesn't matter if you're looking at the structure, track listing, individual songs, soundscape, all the elements of this record are super consistent, they stay together, and they don't really deviate that much. The structure, for example, simple, straightforward, easy to digest, easy to navigate. Uh, a lot of repetitiveness as you progress through it. There's not a lot of changes. It's not an album that offers you ups and downs. It's not a roller coaster ride. It doesn't deviate from the beaten path. So it's an album that allows yourself to engage with it, easy to progress through it. Uh, not a lot of things that you have to work hard in order to get around them. So it's an album that just plays itself uh, uh, in, in a very simple way, in a very simple format but it works well with the overall soundscape that the album has to offer. Now, the soundscape of the album is very potent. Talk about aggression, intensity, power, strength, animosity at times. All of these words are perfectly fine to use in order to describe the overall soundscape that this record has in store for the listener. And that soundscape stays uniform throughout the whole record. It doesn't matter what's changing internally, it doesn't matter how they constructed the songs, that intensity, that aggression, that power, that strength, that animosity is there on every single song. It's coming at you and it's coming at you in a very relentless way. This album always feels like it's in your face. It doesn't feel like it gives you a chance to breathe. It works because the overall length of the album is only 33 minutes. I really feel like if this was an album that passed the 45 minute mark, it would become overbearing. It's just too much aggression. It would have been too much intensity for the listener to be able to process through it and come out at the end feeling like they wanted to go back for a second round. Keeping the album around the 33 minute mark and packing this much power, this much intensity and this much aggression into it, it works because it comes at you in short bursts, it comes at you fast and heavy and it goes away quickly. So the overall soundscape, the overall structure and the overall time length of the album, they all cooperate with each other in order to give you this blast of heaviness, fast and heavy, fast and furious, and then just goes away. Once you break the soundscape, there are definitely two elements that drive the experience of this record, the drums and the guitars. I absolutely love the drums on this album. My favorite portion of this record is definitely the drums. I love listening to the drums because they, they stay consistent, once again, they stay consistent throughout the record, but at the same time, they offer everything that this album has as far as that, that, uh, that intensity and aggression. The, the drums on this record, they're not just the foundation. They're not just the pillars. They're not just the first floor. They're the walls, they're the second floor, they're the roof. They're everything with this album. Everything else works because of how strong the drums are, how cohesive they are, how unified they stay. They change throughout the tracks. They give you different looks, different feels. But as far as that in-your-face approach, as far as that heaviness that they create, that bass line that they create, that stays true across all 10 songs and allows the guitars to then come on top and be a little bit more diverse. I wouldn't call the, the guitars on this album eclectic because they're not. They don't change that much. They don't go outside the box at all. They do give you a, a couple of different looks here and there depending on which song you're on. But when you take two steps back and you look at the overall big picture of this record, even the guitars feel very consistent from top to bottom. You honestly have to dig deep into the tracks to start to realize where the variations are happening. Because outside the surface or above the surface, this album feels very straightforward, very linear, even from a guitar's perspective. Underneath the surface, you start to see a little bit more of changes, a little bit more of uh, fluctuations that allow the tracks to be a little bit more dynamic to come a little bit more to life. The last piece of the puzzle is the vocals and the vocals in my opinion are the most dynamic element of this record. Changing, morphing, growing, giving you a different perspective, a different style of aggression, a different style of intensity depending on where you are within the record and where you are within the tracks themselves. Very important for an album that is this consistent across almost every single element to have vocals that are more dynamic, vocals that are more eclectic. They don't go outside the box as far as the genre is concerned, but they definitely allow the album to have a little bit more life, to feel a little bit more 
uh, uh, dynamic, like I said, to feel like it has a little bit more of a pull and push and not just moving in one single direction at one single speed. So I really appreciate the changes as far as vocals are concerned because was one of them was in my opinion, the most important element as far as changing your perception of this album. I don't think it changes the overall feel and I don't think it changes the overall look that this album has and how you will perceive it, but it definitely takes the album in, in, in a different way, allowing you to get a, a little different look as far as the individual tracks are concerned. And that is important so that the album doesn't become uh, one sound, one style, one approach from top all the way to the bottom. Overall, I enjoy the record. This album is a solid record. If you're looking for a heavy album, this album definitely is heavy. But I didn't feel really connected with this record. I didn't feel like there was enough there for me to come back for more. It's one of those albums that you listen to it, listen to it once, you enjoy it, you groove to it, but then you put it away. It doesn't have that come back for more factor to it. There's not enough there on this record that would allow me to come back and want to experience it again because I feel like everything that was there, everything that they had to offer with it, they offered it the first time that I listened to it. There's nothing there for me to relearn or re-engage myself with. It, it has a simple way of coming across and a simple way of being processed. And that simplicity kind of hurts the overall playability because there's just not enough layers, there's just not enough depth and enough thickness within the sound, within the experience, within the record itself to make it one of those albums that becomes memorable. Now, having said that, there are some songs on this record that I really enjoy, and those are definitely memorable tracks, at least from my perspective. I wanna start off with my mental castration. This is the opening track on the album, and I really like the delayed intro on this song because this is not just the intro to this track, it's also the intro into this album. So I like this way of starting the record, building in the intro into the opening track, making it all one and not really separating the two it eases you into the aggression. Once you get into the aggression, the drums become absolutely demolishing. It's definitely one of the trademarks of this record and is definitely one of the trademarks of this track. The guitars offer a sense of consistency. They bring the song together. They offer the sound a little bit more of a robust feel. Uh, the, the sound starts to expand, becomes a little bit bigger, but you always have a sense of the drums and guitars working in parallel with each other in order to make this song as robust, as powerful as possible. The vocals are the dynamic force, changing the eyesight of the listener, changing the dynamic movements of the track itself, and allowing you to move perhaps a little bit away from the song, but never move too far. It really stays controlled, it really stays cohesive, all the way from the top, all the way to the end. But a song that has enough changes, that's in dynamic enough, and has enough strength, and I really enjoy the intro, in order to make one of those songs that I really gravitated around. I, I like how this track is put together. I like how it comes across. Next, Compulsory Consumption. This is the second track on the album. And by the second track, you start to feel, uh, you start to understand where this record is going as far as the soundscape is concerned. You start to see some of the elements that were present on the first track morphing into the second track. Uh, staying there, uh, not changing too much, uh, staying consistent in the way it's put together, uh, showing you a lot of similarities in terms of the approach, in terms of the overall soundscape, in terms of the heaviness that this track has to offer. So your, your eyesight may change ever so, light, so slightly, but your perception of this track doesn't change your overall feel like you're gonna get for the rest of the album. So I love the aggression, the heaviness. Once again, the drums become very powerful, very strong, pushing this track forward, working with the guitars in parallel in order to create a, a, a robust song, keeping a lot of the same elements that we saw in the previous track, My Mental Castration, alive and well, moving them onto this song. Not as dynamic vocally as the previous track was, but still a song that offers you uh, ever so slight changes in order to keep you engaged, in order to give you a feeling of up and down, even though this track is very linear uh, in how it comes across from beginning all the way to the end. Last but not least, the last track on the album, Cynic Suicide, my favorite song on the record. And why this song is my favorite song? I love the melancholy melody that it has. This is a different track. It sounds, there's nothing on this album that sounds remotely close to this song. This track starts to pend uh, or move the pendulum, the pendulum a little bit more towards melodic death metal or more traditional sounding death metal. But the element of this track that I gravitated towards is definitely the guitar element. 
how it sounds, how it comes across, the melody that it has, how melancholic it is, because from a drum's perspective, nothing changes. Still heavy, still brutal, still demolishing, still coming at you in your face, but the guitars have a different vibe, the guitars have a different feel, they give you a different fragrance, they give you a different atmosphere to this track, you feel differently towards this track. Even though this song is still robust, it's still a heavy song, it's still in your face, you feel like you're able to breathe within it. While the other tracks on the album, the other nine tracks on the album were in your face and you never got a chance to really catch your breath because you felt like you're getting pounded second and second again, like it's just coming at you in a relentless format, this song is still coming at you, but you're allowed to breathe within it. And that is because of the melody that it has, that melancholic approach that the guitar sound, and that is the change. And that is the factor that really changes your perception of this track and how you digest it. In my opinion, the best song on the album because of that. It shows a little bit of creativity. It's not as linear, it's not as straightforward, it's not as easy to process. It offers you a little bit of a curveball within it. And those reasons are the reasons why I gravitated so much towards this track. I wish the album had a little bit more of this throughout it because it would change your perception, it would make the album feel a lot more like it, like a, a ride, if you will, like you're in the ocean with ups and downs, ups and downs, and, and then not giving you this sense of knowing exactly what's coming around the corner because the first nine songs on the album are all very well together. They're all very well glued in, almost feeling as one or as pieces of one larger track. And then this one is completely outside the box as far as everything else is concerned. So I gravitated towards this song because of that difference, because of that sound approach, because of that relentless approach that it has and still allowing you to be within in it and breathe with it. So I love this song. I love how it's put together. Like I said, I just wish there was more of it on this album. This is it. This is Necrotted Operation Mental Castration out March 19th on Reaper Entertainment Europe. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.